So we have a question. Once having surrendered, can I unsurrender or desurrender? And the answer is, of course you can. You could unsurrender at every moment or at any moment or any time you choose. And actually, we're doing it all the time. We're surrendering and then Maya is coming and saying, as Prabhupada often said, Maya will speak to you and say, why are you taking so much trouble? This is like, this is too difficult. And the other day, we talked about excuses. Maya will come and say, yeah, but you have to be real. Yeah, this is too much for you. You have to take it easier. Actually, so many devotees tried to do this, but they couldn't, and et cetera, et cetera, and, you know, a myriad of other excuses. I'm too young. I'm too old. Uh, I don't know enough. I know too much. I've been there, done that. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's endless. So, yes, we can surrender, and then we could decide to unsurrender, and then resurrender and unsurrender. And in fact, we're doing that. Now, it's important to note that in Prabhupada's books and Prabhupada's requests of us, in Prabhupada's, in Prabhupada's appealing to our intelligence, he's trying to make us understand we are surrendered to someone or something. If it's not Krishna, then it's something other than Krishna, non-Krishna. But surrender is not something you can avoid. And so it's interesting when we say, I'm not surrendered to Krishna, or we say, I lost my faith in Krishna consciousness, or I lost this or that. Think about what's happening is it's just a transference of surrender. It's just a transference of faith. Oh, I'm not happy in Krishna consciousness. It's a transference of where you find happiness. So if you say, I lost my faith in Krishna, then I would ask, what did you put your faith in other than Krishna? If you say, I, I can no longer surrender to Krishna, then I would ask, what do you surrender to? I'm no longer finding happiness in Krishna consciousness. What are you finding happiness in? So it's not just there's an absence on one side, but there's a transference. I am surrendered. It's not, I'm not going to surrender. I don't surrender to anybody. Of course you do. We surrender to the tax man. We have to pay our taxes. We surrender to all the mosquitoes that end up biting us that we don't see. We, we're, it's, you know, it's foolish to say we're not surrendered. So Prabhupada's appealing to our intelligence. You will surrender to something, so what's the best thing to surrender to? Who is the best person to surrender to? Oh, Bhakishtam, this verse in Bhagavatam. Why should I surrender to anyone else? Putana came, and Krishna gave her the position of mother in the spiritual world, and she tried to kill him. Who's more merciful than Krishna? Why should I surrender to anyone else? Now, I think it's important to understand when we say, I can't surrender, or I don't trust, I don't have faith. It's another, we should actually state what's actually happening is I trust my mind. I trust myself. I surrender to my desires. I do what I want. So instead of saying I lost my faith, why don't we just actually state what's happening? I'm, I have faith in Maya. I have faith in material life. I have faith in, in sense gratification. I have faith in my mind. Now, I'm not saying everything your mind produces is wrong. I'm not saying everything you think is wrong, everything you see is wrong. Of course not. But sometimes it is wrong. Not everything I feel is always true. Not everything I think is always true. So when I say I, I can't surrender to Krishna, I can't surrender to Guru, this and that, so who can I surrender to? I don't surrender to anybody. No, you do. Of course you do. You're surrendering to your own conceptions, your own ideas, your own beliefs of what's right and wrong, which are totally subjective. And because we're so minute, what do we really know? So where to put faith? Who to surrender to? There's no one better to surrender to than Srila Prabhupada and Krishna. Look at the benefits. Oh, but it's so hard. Maybe it's hard, but anything valuable is expensive. So what if it's hard? If you told Prabhupada it's hard, he would say, so what? What are you going to do about it? Complain? Or are you going to face it? 
any excuse you would give to Srila Prabhupada, all he would say is, so, what are you going to do about it? This is the reality. So we can't give up because of the reality. We have to do it because it's the right thing to do. It's the intelligent thing to do. It will produce the greatest results. That's how Prabhupada's training us to think. Not, it's hard, I'm not going to do it. Not, I don't feel like it, I'm not going to do it. Oh, it doesn't make sense to my material, logical mind. Not looking at it that way. I think I'll just do what I want. Oh, you've just surrendered to Maya because that's what Maya told you. Maya said, do what you want, you'll be happy. And she's been telling us that since, as Prabhupada said, time immemorial, which is so long you can't remember it. So kind of, we'll just use the word forever. She's been telling us that forever, and that's why we're still here. So don't fall for that trick. If I say, I can't surrender, I don't have faith, I'm not happy, all it means is we're replacing it with something we think we should have faith in, something we think we should surrender to. But can that produce eternity, knowledge, and bliss? Of course it can't. Can this thing that you're doing that's making you happy give you eternity, knowledge, and bliss? Of course it can't. And therefore Prabhupada's saying, think, think what you're doing, what the result is producing. It may make you feel peaceful or happy or satisfied in this moment, but if it's not bringing you to Krishna, it's, it ends up destroying you. And so finally, I just want to say something about the, the paradox of material enjoyment. The very thing that gives you pleasure is the very thing that kills you. So that that's the essence. This is good. How long is it good for? What's the result? What's the ramification? That feeling of sense pleasure, all oh, this feels good, is your ultimate enemy. Hare Krishna.